So he has been teaching at technical high school for 13 years. Among her many realizations, in 2010, she founded an organization for technical training and entrepreneurship, contributing to a positive impact on tech inclusion of young women to close gender tech gap. She is a Tech Women 2014 worthy of the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs and Women Leaders for the World 2019 Fellow. To say in short, thanks Sophie for coming and talk to us. With you, Sophie. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you everybody who is on here today. I'm actually talking to you from Yaoundé. Yaoundé is in Cameroon and Cameroon is in Africa. So you're listening to me live from the African continent. I uh, want to thank especially our host, our host who invited me here. It's true, she has been following me for a long while now. I just want to be sure you are getting me clearly before I continue. Okay, mm -hmm. that's nice. Um, I would thank her for following my work up. And it's true, she has invited me many times on this platform, but given my busy schedule and some other things I was going through, which you are going to hear in a while, these are the reasons why I, I really found it difficult to come on this platform live to talk about my journey, my journey as a woman in technology. So I'm so glad that today I have this amazing opportunity where I'm going to share my very inspiring journey the journey that keeps me going, the journey that motivates me, the journey that keeps me happy. So at this moment, I'm going to share my screen. I have some PowerPoint slides that I prepared. So um, you just check to know, to let me know if you're seeing my screen. Yes. Oh, what can you yes. read, please? Pushing the dreams of empowering girls in digital skills in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. So today I'll be talking about pursuing the dreams of empowering girls in digital skills in Africa, particularly Cameroon, which is organized by the Global Educators Community and presented by myself, Sophie Ngasa. So, um, um, oh, excuse like me, excuse me, one moment. If you want to, you can use the full screen so we don't see the other parts of your PowerPoint. Where do I take that you now? Can, you can go click the present option. Like, uh, you do you have F five on your uh, computer? The key. Yes, you can press. This. Try that out. Okay. Presentation option. Yeah. Does it work? Uh, in the, the PowerPoint, we have the presentation option. In the bottom line. Uh, do I take, you mean I take the slideshow? Yes. Um, okay. Oh, uh, yes. I think it's in the, the bottom, the right bottom? In the right, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. That's great. Now it's oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> so we are on the second slide. Uh, I was about introducing myself. So I am a STEM advocate for girls. Girls aged zero to, or let me not say zero, let's say six to about 30. I start with these girls early on so that um, I'll be able to inspire them, to attract them into the different fields of technology. By training, I am a civil engineer and um, I had a very challenging journey. That's one of the things that inspired me. That's one of the things that um, gave me the urge, gave me that strong zeal to want to help the girls in my community have it easy in the field of technology. So I realized that if we start with these girls early on, they shall begin to learn the different aspects of technology. They shall begin to have the mindset that a woman can do technology and do it so well. So I've been exposing all the benefits of, of a woman in technology in my community for more than for about 15 years now. 
I was able to create a small hub in uh, Bamenda where I lived before now. I'll tell you the show story in a short while how I got to Yaoundé. Apart from that, I'm also a digital rights activist because actually we had um, internet shutdown in Cameroon in 2017. And I'll let you know why in a short while, why the internet was shut down in Cameroon. So I focus in bringing as many girls as possible to tech. And I also focus in fighting internet shuts down in Africa. Okay. I just launched a new program recently, which is about building women, women in the community who want to stand out for a social cause, who want to impact the community with an idea, who want to impact the community with, um, with something which, which, which affects them in their community, something which they have at heart, something they want to share. It can be their experience. It can be... It can be their knowledge which they want to share with the community. So um, it's all about helping women impact the community with what they have, with their skill, a talent, or something. So um, in order to do that, I create courses. So I create online courses where I train women how to become impactful community leaders. So um, this is Bamenda. Bamenda is where I lived four years ago, where I had that, that small digital hub that I created for girls. So these are some girls that we had at a boot camp. It was, it was actually called Yes, She Quotes Boot Camp. Yes, She Quotes. Where we had, we, had some, we had some guest trainers who came in from the United States. They taught these girls how to use Photoshop to design. So we had about, about 60 girls in two sessions, three days each, who learned how to code and um, how to design using Photoshop. If you look in the pictures well, I don't know if my arrow is showing. This is the main trainer here. And um, I can't see the second trainer. Maybe she was the one taking the picture. This is the second project which I, I did in Bamenda, it's in my same digital hall which is called Bring a Girl to STEM. Bring a Girl to STEM was actually a campaign that I launched. It was both physical and online. Online, I used um, the social media, especially Facebook, which is very popular here in Cameroon. And um, physically, we had, we had this, this space, this my digital empowerment hub, which has equipment. We, have, we had computers, lap, laptops, tablets, and these girls came here, they came here for, I think it was one month to learn um, STEM skills. And after which we had a little competition and we had a prize award ceremony. Of course, it, uh, it was sponsored by some of my partners, which I have in the US. <laughs> Mentors for Change. Oh, this is a mentoring program where we, it was aimed at encouraging women in technology in my community to mentor the younger generation, the young women who were already in the field of technology came together and they, they were able to find ways of sharing their knowledge, ways of inspiring the younger girls, the other ladies who were at school and um, who had not yet chosen a career path. So um, it was all, ab all about trying to trying to help these girls to understand the different fields of technology and helping them try to decide or choose a field in STEM. We wanted that these, these mentors should be, able, should be able to change the mindset of the girls that STEM was meant only for the men by showing them the benefits, by sharing their personal experiences and the success stories of these mentors. Oh, this is a mentor at work. Um, this is one of my best mentors. She's called Pierrette. She, she actually studied networking, computer networking. So this was a working session where she was um, training the girls, helping to show them how to, to, to move on with their projects. Because these girls all had little, little projects which they had to take till the end. 
Oh, this is one of our men. Oh, no, this is not a mentor. She she's an intern. She came on internship at uh, my organization, which is called Center for Youth Education and Economic Development. She spent about two months with us, learning um, what I was doing. She was on internship. Um, she had a project I can't really re remember the name now because it's about seven years ago. STEM for Girls project. This was an amazing project. Really, really. In this project, we had men. The men were there to guide and mentor these girls. And um, this one um, was also done online where we had some mentors in the U.S. communicating or training these girls using Zoom. We had a projector and... Um, we had, these girls had the opportunity of asking questions to these mentors in other parts of the world. So we had about five mentors that had signed up for, for five days and they were on every day to talk to these girls, to inspire them, to put some, some kind of knowledge in them. It was so, so amazing. I really enjoyed this project. Oh, this is Yes, she calls boot camp. This was the final <laughs> project that the girls came out with. Yes, this design was actually done by, by the student. Every student had a design, and this is it. They had like different images that they presented at the end of the project. It was so interesting. I also had a radio program where I I looked for the I I I went there with the girls that were at high school, the girls that were a little bit bigger. After the, the boot camp, after the holiday programs, after the challenges, we go to the radio station, the, the local radio station. So it's a Bamenda radio station where they share what they learned, they shared what they went through, they shared the challenges and their successes. All of this was to get more girls register, more girls join us, in the programs. It was a way to take out the fear, the self-doubt, to be able to build that confidence and esteem in the girls that they can do, they can follow a career in STEM. Oh, this is a radio program and I was invited by this amazing gentleman. <laughs> he was of great help to us. Now, this is a section about um, digital rights. I actually um, led a program in Cameroon called Ensemble Cameroon Project. Ensemble Cameroon is a French word, which means together Cameroon. This project was launched at the time when um, the internet was restored in Cameroon after the shutdown. What was really surprising was that the internet was shut in just a part of Cameroon, which was experiencing crisis which is the English speaking region of Cameroon. So this project Ensemble Cameroon was a way of bringing together the English speaking and the French speaking to come in one forum and talk about the internet challenges they were facing because the internet was cut um, for reasons, for political reasons, saying that the citizens were using social media in an abusive way, in an abusive way, and it, unresponsible way to promote the crisis. So the government shut down the internet. So this project was a way of bringing the two um, regions, different French speaking and English speaking regions together to look for the solutions concerning internet, not really political solutions, but a way that the internet should not be shut down any longer, even if we are facing crisis. I remember that. I remember you said that you had to travel for a long way to find a place to get some internet access. I remember that. It yeah. was crazy. I'll share the story in a bit. Okay, now I'll talk about Cameroon, my country that I love so much. <laughs> Though not very comfortable, but we love it. So, um, like you see on the map, Cameroon is in um, Central West Africa somehow. We are neighbors with Nigeria, Chad, 
Central African Republic, Congo, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. And we also have the sea, which is down towards Douala. We have um, the beach at Limbe and Limbe and Edea. So those two cities are very close to the ocean. We have Marua that is right up, which is very hot. That is in, in the Northern region of Cameroon. The climate is so hot there. We have Bamenda and Bafusam in the West region, which is cold. It has a fresh climate. And um, we also have Douala near the sea, which is also very warm and humid. So now I live in Yaoundé at the center region, which is the capital of Cameroon. So briefly, that is it. We also have a mountain in Boya. Boya is in the Southwest region where we have Mount Cameroon. And in Douala, we have some rivers like River Wuri. We have some falls in um, Edea. Okay, does somebody have any country, any question about Cameroon? So what you say, it seems that you have a, a bit of each landscape in, in the same country. Mountains, uh, you have beaches and cold and warm weather. It's interesting. Yeah, it's um, very diverse, especially the culture. The culture is so diverse. We have so many ethnic groups and so many different languages. From one community to the next, the language changes. <laughs> the culture changes. So it's very, very multicultural. So this is a brief description of Cameroon located in Central, Central Africa. It's described as Africa in miniature because, like you said, it has many, many physical features. You Mountains. have desert too. Yeah, we have the desert <laughs> in the northern region. We have the rainforest, we have the grassland, we have the ocean. I mean, so you have everything in Cameroon. So it's actually Africa in miniature. When you come to Cameroon, you have visited the whole of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, um, a mountain is called a Fako mountain. As of 2017, we are 24 million inhabitants. But by now, we should be like 30,000 30, million, something. 30 million, yeah. We have two official languages, English and French. So I can say um, about 70% of Cameroonians speak both languages. I speak English and French, speak and write perfectly. So you find, it's easy to find a Cameroonian who can write French and English and then a third language or even a fourth. But the languages we speak at school is French and English. Okay, we use a CFA, which is like the French, a lower version of the French franc, since we are a French colony. The colors of our flag, green, red, yellow, with a star on red. Oh, we have some very colorful traditional dresses. Um, in the West and the Northwest region of Cameroon, the dressing is very colorful. This is a man putting on colorful dresses like a woman. <laughs> yes, this dress is called Togo. 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 Why you? Togo. Yeah, okay. if you type over the internet, oh, I can't put in the message section now. But if you just type Togo, T O G H U, you find this kind of dresses. It's amazing. Yeah, a woman and her family in the Togo dress. Okay, thank you for being out the chat. So um, I will just spell Togo in the chat box. Great, so with that, if you type it, Togo dress, you have all these kind of traditional regalia, particularly from the Northwest region of Cameroon because it's so beautiful. It has become the official 
traditional dress for Cameroon. Now I'll talk about the educational system in Cameroon. It starts with um, the nursery section where we have the children, pre-nursery, even um, zero to, to like two years and the pre-nursery, then they move to the primary school, primary level where they spend six years. Then the secondary school, another five years. They do two years in the high school, then they move to the university. So we have these four main sections in Cameroon. And I'm Sophie, sure just to be sure, uh, six years, it's from zero. Since no. they are babies, no. Uh, we have what we call school. the pre-primary or nursery. That is before this primary I put here. So this primary is when they are um, six years old. They start this six years course, which okay. takes them to the secondary school. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So let me come to the challenges that we are facing in Cameroon at the moment, and that affected me too much, affected me so badly, and I was so devastated. The first one is a social political crisis which we experience in Cameroon, and unfortunately, it's still ongoing. So presently, we are facing social political crisis in Cameroon. Like I said earlier, it affected me particularly because the internet was shut down and other things happened. Wow. Yeah, and it started since 2016. So 2016 to 2021, that's more than four years. So um, my country speaks two languages. So we have the Anglophones and the Francophones. The Anglophones are the minority and they are not satisfied with many things, education, in short, everything, like in every, like as everything. So they were revolting and asking for a better life, better living conditions, better education, and lots more, which was not given to them. It started by a simple strike, riot. The government did not respond they started responding very late when the violence already began. It got so violent that they started using arms. Even before arms, they started using like machets to cut off people's necks, actually killing people with machets. Move from that to the use of arms, guns. It became a real battle, armed conflict. So at the moment we in an, we are in an armed conflict in a section of Cameroon, which is an English-speaking region, is is very unique and particular because it's something that is happening just in some part of Cameroon and it's really bad. Whereas the other parts of Cameroon are doing well, like nothing is going on. So that is what is really particular about this crisis. So I began working in Bamenda. That's where I began my career anyhow. And in 2016, the crisis began. It was hot, like I said. It was, it was not physical. It was not too violent. But they were using the internet, especially social media, to fight the war. To fight the war means that they, they used it to instigate violence. They used it to promote the crisis, to promote violence and radicalization. So because of that, the internet, the government shut down the internet. The first time they shut it down, it was a complete blackout. I mean blackout. You couldn't even do a transaction in the bank. You couldn't do anything that required internet. That one was very bad. So after some interventions and um, realizations and some negotiations, the internet was brought back, it was turned on. But after three months, it was shut down again, but now it was partial. Just the social media was put off. You could use the internet, but you could not access no social media platform. And um, that was one of the things that affected me very badly because I was at that moment, I was running a program with the girls at my center called 
Technovation Challenge. Technovation Challenge was a, a, an international, a global competition where girls were learning how to build mobile applications for an Android phone. So they needed the internet and they needed to submit their work. At the moment where we were about beginning this program, I had registered girls, we were all set up, the internet was taken away. So these girls were deprived the opportunity to do that global competition. And that's how all the activities which I did that required the internet had to stop completely. The second thing, okay, and that's also how I had to relocate to Yaoundé because the, the crisis increased. It became now violent. And worst of all, children were deprived the right to education. Schools were shut down for two years, even up to two now. Two years? Yes, two years. Kids were deprived from going to school. All the schools were shut down. So there was no way that I could find girls at school to work with. There was no way that I could run my programs. So I closed my office with everything inside. I just closed the door very well. And I relocated to Yaoundé with my family. Please let me have some water. So I came to Yaoundé and I had to start all over again, trying to set up a computer lab, digital hub, because I'm very passionate about it. That's what I love doing. That's what keeps me happy. I started off in Yaoundé and shortly after the coronavirus hit, <laughs> coronavirus pandemic, and COVID-19 hit, affected me because the people I used to work with, my partners in the US, they were sick, they were not happy, they had lost family members, they were all mourning, they were all um, locked in their houses, quarantine, shut down, and that's how I went low and low and down. I was almost giving up on my, my work, my passion, my vision and everything. So, um, but in the last one year, I picked up again. I said, no, I'm not going to stop there. This is what I like doing, and this is what keeps me going. So I, I started back in Bamenda. I created this new center, Anasta Digital Hub in Yaoundé. So this is my new center in Yaoundé. I was able to transfer all the equipment from Bamenda to Yaoundé, to this new hall. And this hub is actually inside a center that I constructed myself. If you have been following me on Facebook, you would have seen how I raised funds on Facebook to construct this center, this women empowerment center, where I... I train women on digital skills. I named it Anastasia Digital Hub after my mom. My mom is called Anastasia. Um. <laughs> I named it after my mom because she actually gifted the piece of land to me. She gave me like a gift and a starting point. So from there, I told my friends, my followers, my tribe on social media, <laughs> that I had this piece of land which my mother has gifted me. Please, can you support me? Have a building. I want a permanent place. I want a space where women can convene and I want to continue the work I was doing. So that's how I was able to set up this space. Any question, please? Oh. Like okay. Oh, sorry. I mean, this is amazing, Sophie. And the way you st you picked yourself up from that low and went high and you acquired the space to restart your work. Yeah, I mean, I want to congratulate you, but not ask any question as of now. Thank you very much, Mohana. Um, it makes me happy. 
It gives me more positive energy to keep on doing the things I like doing. So um, in Anasta Digital Empowerment Hub, it's a place where I train girls to use digital skills. All of what I do has just one goal, is to narrow the gender tech divide in Africa. I want to narrow the gender, I want to contribute I want to give what I can to narrow the gender tech gap. This gap still exists and is serious. I'll be very happy when I'll be able to contribute in building a society where women have equal access to STEM education and can benefit from all the amazing opportunities that exist. Oh, this is my small space in my office. I call it Sophie Tech Hub. <laughs> it's actually a, a new place that I just created. This is where I record my videos. My because I'm I'm recording lessons, lessons for women that I'll soon be delivering. So um, in the picture, I'm actually sitting there now as I'm talking to you. If you look at the background, you see the job behind. You have um, the ring lights, the cameras, the phone the headset, the speakers, these are all the equipment which I was able to acquire that I use in recording online courses, which I'm going to put together. I do videos for YouTube, which I'll be sharing with women, motivating them, training them, teaching them some of the things, aspects which they want to learn in technology. Yeah, this is my my home lab for video making, live streaming, online training, I'm coaching because I'll soon start a coaching program for women, young women who want to learn how to do the things I'm doing well. Women who admire me, who have been following me, they always ask me questions. They want to know the things I do, how, how I got there. And so I've just decided to create this the opportunity where I'm going to train the women during live sessions. Okay, this is a digital rights coalition in Cameroon, um, which we created. We actually created this coalition after the Ensemble Cameroon project. So we're able to, to bring leaders together, leaders of um, civil society organizations to form a coalition for digital writers. When we come together, we'll be able to defend our, our rights online. Digital rights are human rights online because we want to use the internet. We don't want the internet to be shut down even if we are experiencing crisis in our country. Okay, this is talking about the two internet blackouts which we um, experienced. I've already talked about them. It was very, very devastating. I have my stories that were, were shared on um, some magazines. Um, maybe I can share the link after this in, in the Facebook forum. Slate Magazine shared my story. World Pulse shared my story, how the internet affected me negatively. So if you want to really know what I went through during that period, what I experienced, I'll share the links and you can read the full stories. Yes, please, then you can share with us. Okay, then you just need to remind me after this so I don't, I, I don't forget. Sure. <laughs> oh, the Dream Builder Academy, wow. <laughs> I didn't know I included it in my slide. So this is actually a new project which I'm going to launch in October, the Dream Builder Academy. Ha. It's actually um, like an online school where I want to train women how to build their wild dreams. I want to teach women, I want to train them how to follow their dreams fiercely until they catch them and realize them. They are women who have a lot of dreams, women who have potentials, women who have great visions, but because of fear, lack of self
So I want to train these women about leadership mindset, visioning, building your dream actually. So they, at the end of the day, these women should be able to have a tangible vision that is real and that they can show. I made it happen in my life. So I know what it takes. I know how to do it. And I want to give back to my community. Sophie, it's your video is cutting. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. I just want to uh, put my phone off. Whoop. Oh, the video is stopped. It. it was frozen. Now you're back. Okay, is it? All right. Okay. So um, I want to help these women to take intentional, actionable, positive steps to catch and build their wildest dreams. For any cause, any woman that has an idea, a vision, a talent, something she wants to use to impact her community, I want to walk her through the different steps she needs to take in order to impact, in order to, to touch the lives of the people she wants to, depending on her passion, the, what is going to make her feel happy and fulfilled. The vision building lab. Oh, so now I'm a vision building leadership coach. I was actually coached by another amazing lady in the US called Tracy Malone. She actually put me through this course of coaching, which I just completed. And like I said, I'll be launching this project in uh, October. Oh, thank you very much. I've come to the end and this is my contact. My email address, my phone number, which is also my WhatsApp number. And um, that should be my website under. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your kind attention. Thank you, Sophie, for so inspirational, inspiring talk. <laughs> we are all <laughs> blessed with that. And that's amazing. <laughs> Sophie, do you mind uh, going back to the last slide, please? Your contact details. Okay. Thank you. Is it okay? Um, if you could, you can copy and paste it, um, and chat okay. so everybody can have it. Okay. Please. Uh, can you help me have the, the chat box come on? Mm -hmm. Or later I can share with everybody. Mm -hmm. I can share it uh, later. No problem. Okay, it's there now. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, that number is uh, my WhatsApp number. <laughs> so you can always... So, uh, Sophia, I had a few qu I read about your dream builder, you know, endeavors very recently before this talk. Just a little glance of it. And I was very curious to know, like, are you kind of coaching only the girls in your area in Cameroon, Africa, or you're kind of going worldwide. And, uh, you know, like, are you kind of, so anybody coming up with a dream to you, are you kind of help them realize it? Or you have a certain pattern of approaching women? Okay, let me take the first question. Yeah, it's worldwide because um, I have a website, which is an educational hub where anybody, any student, Oh, it's it's cutting. So if we can't hear you again. Mm -hmm. 
I message her. Uh, so in this meantime, uh, we have James Akaba. Welcome, James. Please introduce yourself to your, to your community while we wait yes, for. Uh, yes, thank you so much. It's a thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be part of this community. Um, I work very closely with uh, Sophie Gasa. Uh, we were together just some weeks back, and uh, if I were to say one thing about the last question you asked, she actually plays a very vital impact mentoring some scholars at Open Dreams. You can see Open Dreams at the back here. So Open Dreams is a small uh, international nonprofit. Uh, I'm talking from Yaoundé, Cameroon, uh, but the headquarters is in uh, is in uh, California. So we work with high achieving low income students. We promote access to higher education and for quality education as well. And the girls at Open Dreams are doing pretty fine. I serve as the country director, um, and I'm very passionate about education, about community impact, about making a difference, about lifting people above ordinary levels. So that's a little bit about who I am. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be on board. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Uh, you so know, much. here's the um, um, Global Educators Meeting. We have been officially organizing these meetings. And for example, today we have people from South Korea, Vietnam, Mexico, Canada, Sweden, um, Nigeria. And so it's a very friendly community and please welcome. And it's good to, to have you all here and connected and bridging the distance. So, Dr. Anthony, what are your impressions by now? <laughs> I'm, 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 there's a saying over here, I'm flabberwhelmed, okay? <laughs> flabberwhelmed, that's a combination of very impressed. I'm very impressed, I can, I can see, I can see uh, Sophie's uh, passion and you know her her story. I'm aware. You don't forget. Yes, I I I am I'm, I'm Swiss trained, and I I spent half my time in Switzerland, but I spent a lot of quality time in Nigeria. So I'm just beside. I'm I'm in a country right beside her. So we hear we heard a lot about what happened in her country, and this is the first time I'm actually hearing from somebody that was in it and escaped from it. So you see, it was thrilling for me to hear this thing that we were seeing in the news over here. And uh, there's, there's some kind of comradeship because, you know, Nigeria is, a, is an English speaking country, uh, Anglophone, and then the part that this was happening in is the English speaking part of Cameroon. So uh, we, were, we were following closely uh, what happened. And a lot of people came from there as refugees into Nigeria. So we have this emotional connection to make sure and I, we really wish them very well. So I'm, I was excited to see that there's a story, a positive story from there. Uh, she felt it. She was in it, but picked up herself, went somewhere else and continued. And you can see she's striving. So and then uh, just at the end, we get uh, James that attests uh, that she's, uh, you know, it's one of the products of what she's doing. So I, I'm, I'm super impressed, man. This uh flabberwhelmed that is um flabbergasted and overwhelmed together <laughs> so i'm really happy to see that i hope you came thank you thank you so much um, um, um it's good to know these stories sometimes you work so hard and you're in a closed you know you're closed you're doing your thing you're programming your own things and then you don't know the other people that are really you know, struggling and doing the same thing with you, I mean, pushing through. So I'm happy to meet you, James. I'm happy to meet uh, Sophie. I hope she can get back to the forum. 
And I'm happy that, you know, this community is, is, is beautiful. There's, I'm, I'm looking at the screen and I'm, I'm talking to people from Korea, from Sweden, to India. It's beautiful. And we must condemn and, and we, we must uh, commend, I'm sorry, um, Sophie for her actions. I have some, uh, I have some uh, questions, but they're technical questions that I'd like to ask Sophie. Technical questions. Yeah. I think I think she made a mistake. Maybe others could answer because we were all listening, right? Uh, she said sixteen to thirty. I think she meant no. So she said six to to thirty. Maybe she meant six to thirteen, right? No, the because she, the, maybe because she works with young women, women too. Oh, so she really Not meant only, uh, uh, children. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, okay. So it was six to thirty. It wasn't a mistake, huh? Mm -hmm. okay. I think so. All right. Okay. 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 And um, that's that. That was the major thing. And then she, she, um, she specializes and is focused on the women uh, aspect of it. And uh, the, of course, they say train. I think it's the same for all over the world. But in Africa, we say train a woman, and you're training a generation. So that's that's a very important thing, especially here. So. You, I'm impressed. That's it. I, let me allow other people speak uh, or ask, and uh, I'll come back. I'll come back. Yes, we we're, we're waiting for for her to come back. I... Mm -hmm. So, uh, James, would you like to talk something, please? Yes, I, I just want to quickly thank Anthony for the compliments. Yes, we, we went through a very difficult situation that we've never experienced. I was born in a very peaceful environment. We were used to playing around, doing all sorts of things. James. Then James, one day we just got up, uh, you know. James, just sorry for interrupting, but could you please speak slowly? <laughs> yes, we have people from okay, good. many, many <laughs> languages here. Yeah, 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 yeah that, sorry. That, that is, that is, that is, yeah, that is important. I have learned uh, inclusion in some of my programs. So let me go a little bit slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just got up one day and the things started like a joke, but not too long we started getting gunshots, which eventually got to the level of the interruption of the internet for months. Like it was something to last for a day, for two days, but it went far beyond. In fact, as I'm talking, I'm actually an IDP in my country. This is not the town where I was when things started going wrong. Um, so um, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I really salute the hospitality of Nigeria for hosting hundreds and hundreds of Cameroonian refugees, even though we are very bitter with the administration of Nigeria because they're not helping matters. They're just siding with, they've just taken a side in the conflict and have become an active part of it. You know, not listening to a minority, which is very horrible. But then we salute uh, the brotherly relationship with Nigerians. You know, from birth, uh, like at our program at Open Dreams, we've had Nigerians there and they play very important roles in, I, I believe in the creativity of Nigerians, especially with respect to technology engineering. So they've been playing very critical roles there. So I just thought, you know, I should salute that part and say we are grateful for all of the support while hoping that our country will evolve from the difficult situation in which it is. Because for, for it's been six years now and, and each year has been worse than the previous. This year is just the worst of all of them. So we keep getting deep, deep, deep into the crisis and there's apparently no headway as at the moment. Uh, but we are also at the level of education. We believe that um, we believe that whatever the question, the answer is education. The more we get people educated, the more we can build peace, the more they can sort out themselves. And that is why we are putting in everything into education. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow, wow. Well, that's that's emotional, man. Because you know, like I said, we 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 cannot. I cannot. Uh, can you hear me? It's my yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. We cannot pretend. We cannot pretend we do not know what's happening in Cameroon. So, if I can help put this in perspective, okay, what's happening is that in the midst of a crisis, we have Sophie and James keeping the flag of of education to the poorest and less privileged 
women going on. That, that's commendable. That's what's really happening. In the midst of, 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 of crisis, and you know, it's, it's easy to talk about crisis with words till you experience it. It's not funny. And these people have found a way to connect, uh, to, 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 en to enliven the lives of, of children, and as I'm learning also of, of, of young youths, and who knows? You never know where this ends. Somebody is receiving training now from Sophie and, and James that will go on to open a school and train 500 to 600 to 1,000 people tomorrow. You know? So this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. I am uh, I'm very attached to it. And let me encourage you, you know, you, 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 um, it may be down. Uh, okay, I, I tell you something. I tell you something. This is personal, though. But uh, um, I have a, a building. I, I, I'm into real estate. And um, we had to open. We, we, okay, everybody living there is living there for free. And they're all from Cameroon. They're all from your place. That's to show you how, yeah, because what do you do? They came in and they couldn't, they, they, you could see what was happening and they needed a place to stay. So they're staying very well there and they're doing very well. And uh, they're going to Nigerian schools and uh, they're assimilating. Everything is going to get a lot better. Every country has gone through this. Most countries have gone through this and everything turns out good in the end. So let me just encourage you, okay? It's going to be fine. Um, the world, the education, the content, can, uh, the, the content of, maybe this question is for Sophie, but let me ask you too. The aim of the people that you're empowering, your, the, the goal is so that they, can you complete the sentence? Okay, you're, you're putting through women, and young ladies through uh, training, okay? With the goal of, of when they finish your training, what, what is expected of them? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, before I respond to, oh, I have to be slow. <laughs> thank you so much. Before I respond to your question, uh, let me pour out my heart to you for the sacrifices that you do for our own refugees. In fact, I made a plan to get to Nigeria in, in December 2018 to visit some of the refugee camps. But just within that time, uh, the, the government stepped up oppressions against people who were like crossing the border and assisting refugees. And it became a little bit difficult for me to take the risk to, to travel. So I'm really happy that you're doing fantastically and helping these communities of, of people. Okay, in terms of the... Students that we help, um, I'm happy Sophie is coming back. Uh, I and Sophie, we happen to have uh, benefited from US sponsored programs. We went abroad and we came back and we are serving our communities in very uh, distinctive ways. So we use our, ourselves as an example to say that when you go out there, it is not just for you to go make a, build a fortune for yourself and forget about home. The main purpose is to transform communities back at home. Go get the education, get the means, get the technology, come back and solve local problems within the communities. In fact, uh, so during this summer, we had, I think, about 40 Open Dream Scholars spread across the country, tackling problems. They came with money, they came with food, they came with books, they came with gifts, they came with all sorts of things, and they did not sit in the city centers to help those who already have at least a way to survive. They went into the troubled communities where the guns are still sounding and they met the most vulnerable. They provided books, they provided money, they provided sanitary pads, they provided face masks, they provided essential things to give them hope, to help them get back to school, to keep them on track, to keep them uh, resilient and this really touched our heart. So that's the much that our scholars do. We just sit back and watch and admit what they do. Sometimes we tell them, please don't go to this zone because it is too risky. 
uh, or you take full responsibility for what you're doing. And surprisingly, they go there and they deliver the goods, they send pictures, and we just sit back and say, we are so thankful that this is happening. At least we are not at the point of complaining. We are actually, you know, helping to alleviate the difficult situation. So that's how it happens. Thank you so much. Sophie, glad you're back. Mm. Welcome back, Sophie. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, James, for supporting me. James is my very close collaborator. Um, once in a while, I go to open drinks to, to talk to the young ones, to inspire them, to motivate them, to stay on their lane and to keep on doing what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Or oh, I don't know what you were doing now. <laughs> mm, hello, Isa. Or do I... Uh, when you were, uh, what do you think? I should continue? Or oh, hello, is it maybe somebody else? Yes, maybe Andes, you, you, had, you, you said that you had some tech questions to. Yeah, the tech question. Sophie. Okay, yes, yeah, I, can, on, I, I can. Okay, sorry about that. This will be my last question in uh, some time. But the tech question I wanted to ask, which James has actually answered, but let me ask it to you, Sophie. First of all, I was commending you. I was commending your efforts. Um, it's uh, beautiful, and uh, I, I put I put what you're doing in perspective as very wonderful. Uh, you the, the the best part of the story is you picked up. You know, you picked up again, and you're forging forward. The children, the women that you're reaching, uh, who knows who they're going to be? They could be the next woman. Uh, Jeff Bezos, okay, just because you 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 you, you didn't give up, okay, you didn't give up and you 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 wanted to reach them. So kudos to you and keep encouraged. Now I asked the question before that uh, what is uh, when you finish with with people that undergo your training, when you finish with them, uh, what what is it that you expect that they go out to the world to do? That was my question. Oh, thank you very much for this um, very interesting question. So um, by the end of my project, you are supposed to launch a project. Launching a project means that you have to carry out an initiative in your community. If you are passionate about um, working with girls who suffer from trauma, then you should launch that project and hopefully create an organization, a CSO, to create an organization that is going to lead girls facing trauma. That's an example. Maybe girls, um, like after the war, we are going to have girls who have experienced rape and other violent issues. So I, if you are passionate about that, I expect you to start a project where you are going to work with these girls who came out from the crisis and um, maybe they were raped or something. So you need to rehabilitate these girls. That's just an example. Yes, so you must have a tangible project which you are going to run, and I'll teach you how to raise funds to be able to support your project. Wow. Okay, so you're creating many more of you. You're spreading the efforts. Okay, I understand now. All right, okay. Actually, okay. what I have done, it worked well for me. So I'm just giving it back to some other women who want to lead their communities in a positive way, women who are passionate about the pressing issues that things are happening around them who want to stand for something so I, I know how to do it so i'm just going to train them giving them the right steps making it easy to, for them because i'll hold their hand and work them through with my cause no cliche no cliche when i say please we all know that train a woman and you've trained a generation so I know we always say it, but we really mean it, okay? So, so, so go ahead and uh, we're with you. You know, I'm, from, I'm next door to you. I, 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 <laughs> I, I love Africa. I'm next door to you. And we're doing our own part uh, to, to help. So kudos to you, Sophie, okay? James, my man, kudos to you too, all right? <laughs> okay. It's, it's all really, right. Yeah, it's, it's really great, the work that both of you are doing. And... Um, I had a few questions, uh, you know, Sophie, just maybe it could be personal, maybe it could help others too. So we often come up with dreams, like this is what we want to fix in the society, right? As a woman, as a person, whoever. Uh, so uh, when it comes to charity, like you are trying to, you know, resolve issues in or conflicts in the society, uh, 
do you think like a non-profit is the way that that might solve and you know how to approach the government or you know is it the grants that help or is it like the industries who are behind for financing like just a very high level overview not getting into the details of your coaching session yeah if you can please enlighten us given that in cameroon is very difficult to approach the government looking at our political condition and the situation if you want to start um, carrying out a project where you're going to maybe face the government is going to get so challenging so i don't want to get women into that so i'm taking women to the other side of of um, the non-governmental side where you can have supporters and funders who can be willing to support your project. So we shall begin by assessing your vision. I have a vision clarity and um, assessment session where I validate your vision. May I add or subtract something, I fine tune it because I know how to do it and I know the kind of things that, um, that can make your vision to be sustainable. Even if you don't have support like from a funder or something, there are some other activities that you can carry out to raise funds even in Cameroon. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, what happened to the competition? Oh, that's a sad story. So that year, uh, we didn't compete. Cameroon didn't take part. And then I moved out of Bamenda, which, um, which was the area where I loved working. Coming to Yaoundé, I had to set up new teams of girls, um, begin collaborating with the schools around here. So it has not been easy. So I'm hoping to begin next year, you know, contacting parents, schools, girls, building the teams, finding mentors. It's a whole lot of work. So that's the kind of things that pain me in my heart when I think of, of where I'm from. <laughs> okay. Okay, so kudos next year. Don't give up. Take it up. Take it up. You have all it takes uh, to, to make sure the children compete and and. Pro probably win okay that the important thing is for them to participate and, and, yeah. and get things done so kudos to you over to you um heloisa thank thank you for your <laughs> comments suggestions and questions it's yeah. great but I, I would like to to ask for pe other people what it's so interesting because we have people from different cultures, backgrounds here, and how each one can get this, uh, how much this talk has uh, impacted you. For example, uh, Anders, Jorge, would you like to, uh, Veronica, what are your impressions? And also, we have people from Vietnam and and Dengen Nguyen. Please go on, Anders. Okay, <clears throat> I try. I'm I'm sitting in Sweden, retired person, and we haven't had a conflict armed conflict in over 200 years so for me it was like oh what is happening so and i i, I feel the power from you sophie it's so amazing i i have no words maybe i start crying but i don't know but <laughs> it, it's so amazing yeah that, my my life is easy you know i i wake up in the morning and eat and go training and go to makerspace and that's it and you struggled so much no internet and conflicts everywhere so yeah i have no questions <laughs> I just <laughs> maybe, maybe you, you can you, be you, you, one of the international mentors helping their groups. Maybe. Yes. And I, now I like that you the, are retired the... and you have spare time, you <laughs> he's very good. He 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 he's just like this because he's a very hearted and kind person. 
but he's mm. good. So you could ask him for help. Right, oh, Sanders? Not, <laughs> no, not that good. <laughs> I'm, I'm also passionate uh, like you. I was educator for 30 years or 35 years or, or like that. So I, my passion is for the kids. And I like the way you're doing it with the girls. I think the girls are the, the key. And I, I don't know if I could be a role model for girls, but I think 50% uh, of the people are girls. So why shouldn't we give them a tech education? Oh, that's amazing. Keep up the good work. And now I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jorge, are you still there? Or Gonza, uh, Jorge? Jorge Mahuna, Veronica. Yes, they are from Mexico. Ah, okay. Jorge and Veronica are from Mexico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's Lorette. Do I see Loretta? I, I don't know her. Lo oh, Loretta Cheeks. It, is she a friend of yours? Uh, yeah. Of mine? US. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. My mentor. Oh, that's nice. How I do you say this name? Mm, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Loretta. Hello, hello. So it is a China <clears throat> name, if, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for inviting me to, to listen in. I did chime in when Anthony was giving you high praise and James was uh, uh, pinching, pinch backing, like backing you up. Okay, so uh, I do get a sense of the tremendous lift that you are doing. And I will do something. Uh, I do know that I will be doing something with you. Beautiful. So um, we will be in touch. I sent you this note and uh, we'll be in touch. I, be encouraged. Uh, you do have friends. So let's see how much we can do together. Lorena, where are you from? Sorry. I'm in Arizona. Oh. Yes, I'm in Arizona. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm originally from Louisiana, but I'm in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I've been here for quite a bit. And uh, yeah, and I'm also an educator and a scholar. Um, I wear different hats. I have a nonprofit and a for-profit. Mm -hmm. And uh, my area of expertise is artificial intelligence. My background is computer science. That's where my PhD is in. Oh, interesting. Uh, we had a series of uh, artificial intelligence in from past meetings. Different pe persons from different countries um, presenting their experience with students. Maybe we can have you on another meeting talking about your work. For sure. For sure, yeah. just let me know. We'd let like so to, to know you better. <laughs> yes, let Sophie know. You can look me up. I'm pretty pretty out there. So you can actually look me up or, or connect with me on, uh, what do you call it, LinkedIn? Uh, if that's something that you use, LinkedIn, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But Sophie knows me very well. So um, we yeah. Been touch. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, it really br brought, uh, as An Andrew said, it, you know, um, even though we have our struggles, our struggles in the U.S., a lot of times circle around racial issues, but it's still, it's, no, it's not to be compared um, with everyday struggle of survival and, uh, and making sure that students have a future and have a hope. So what you're doing is very, very important. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Loretta. Can I say thank you to Loretta Cheeks? You're most welcome. You're most welcome. 
thank you. And uh, thank I'm you so much for inviting me. That you came on and you've given a word. I mean, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You're one of my mentors. Thank you very much for coming online. You're most welcome. We, we, we uh, always say you, no matter what you do, even if you start small, uh, and oftentimes you do have to start small, but if you do well with the little you have, eventually the momentum will come full circle and you will start to get what you need to fulfill your mission. So uh, it's an honor again to just to, to know you, to know a little bit more about your work and, and see how I can help. So thank you, uh, Anthony, for uh, Anthony literally is your cheerleader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's setting, yeah. up, he's setting up the volleyball so everybody can hit. So thank you. And, and thank you for Helena uh, for, uh, for such a facilitation, great facilitation. It's, it's a pleasure meeting you, Loretta. Um, Anders, uh, your, your emotion is, is, is speaks, uh, speaks 2,000 words, man. 2,000, more than a million words. Emotions are stronger than words. Loretta, the encouragement I think you've given um, us, and of course to Sophie, I think it made it means more than you can imagine. Uh, help, help to do what you can, and uh, like I said, the next Jeff Bezos. That's I mean, woman Jeff Bezos could be just somebody that she's reaching out to somewhere, you know. So we we we're proud of her, and thank you for 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 your kind support to her too. You're most welcome. Okay, I think we have a very impressive talking. We have learned and you have been very positively impacted with all this work and experience you have. It's really an example for most of us. And for sure, our community is made of this good-hearted people, passionate people for education. And each of us has an um, interesting, impressive story. And I, so that's why I'm so, so happy that finally you came to, to show your work. It's very impressive. I'm very touched with that. And mm. please welcome and please stay with us. And we're going to share this, this video. And now we have more people from other parts of the world to, to be with you. Okay? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. I, I, and I hope by now you understand why most of the times when you used to invite me to come online, I will tell you, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Honestly, I was feeling low. <laughs> I needed something to move me up. And um, one of the communities that helped to, to move me up is the um, Ivy McGregor community. Um, another mentor I have, she's called Ivy. She's the one that, you know, took me out of this deep pit and said, you can get out of there. And she worked with me for like two months and I began blooming back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and, and for everything. It's very passionate. So uh, I'd like, so it's time to, to, to wrap up. And please, I'd like to, to invite you to, to um, enter our, our website and share your CV. We have a form so you can, a small few questions. So please enter your, uh, your name as member of the community so we can find each other, contacts, email, any other links you have, interests. You'll find it's four or five questions just enter the website 
and enter your information so we can can share all is sharing with other people in other parts of the world so we can find you and others as a matter of fact a lot of people has already presented and didn't uh, i always forget for asking that's my bad so please uh, uh, answer that form and we will have your content there too okay sophie okay and also so I, oh sorry mm -hmm. no no i just wanted to say i, I put me in touch i'll be in touch with you uh sophie and james and uh you know there's a lot we can do uh we have to do a lot like i was explaining before you came there's a, there's a kinship there and uh the more the more you grow the more we are growing so i'll be in touch uh Heloisa will put us in touch and uh we move forward, okay? We'll do what we can do from our side. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you everybody for your time, for being here. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you all. And we said, keep up the good work. You know, the, what you're doing is, is like something like Mother Teresa. That's that's the word that comes to my mind, all right? So, you know, be, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You know, it's fantastic what you're doing. Uh, what you did today, if we were to put it in a, in, 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 in a paragraph, is you, you've enlightened a lot of people that other, otherwise wouldn't have known or heard about this, okay? And you've connected people. So uh, it wouldn't be good to end this meeting without some encouragement to you too, okay? Thank you so much. And <laughs> Thank you. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Bye bye. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, Sophie. Bye. bye.